professional engineers think that the achievement of registration as a chartered engineer or incorporated engineer is the major milestone in their professional life. Professional engineers in the UK have had a common standard since 1964 and the number of engineers and technicians obtaining a professional qualification in engineering continues to grow year on year. A steady supply of professional engineers and technicians remain vital for global health and economy. It sets you apart because professional engineer means experience, education, judgement and trust. It also means competence, innovation and leadership. Professional engineering is a learned and honourable profession. So, how do we find professionals of the highest quality? How does society know that it can trust the engineer responsible for our key infrastructure development? The critical thing for many is to have public recognition of their standing in the profession. Society needs skilled and competent engineers and that is where the IT comes in. Welcome to the Institution of Engineering and Technology. In order to maintain the advancement of the engineering profession, the IT needs to deliver value in the services it offers that helps its members to elevate their core competence and abilities to practice as professional engineers at the highest levels. The IT is in a position to qualify members of the institution to be incorporated engineers and chartered engineers through the professional review process. That's the professional review interview and a review of the engineer's evidence of competence. The professional review interview is a fundamental element of the Engineering Council's registration process and mandatory for incorporated engineer or IEng and chartered engineer CEng. An applicant goes forward to professional review interview if evidence in his or her application form satisfies the IT's trained assessors who are professional engineers themselves. The purpose of the interview is to confirm that engineers have demonstrated the overall level of competence in all the five competence and commitment areas expected of a professional engineer. Through this tutorial you are going to learn how to prepare, how the interview is conducted, the delivery of the presentation, types of questions the interviewers may ask, and an explanation of assessment process. The interview is a critical part of the registration process. It's an opportunity for you to bring your application to life, for the interviewers to recognise the qualities that are not visible on your paper application. Before we take you through an abridged version of the interview, it is important that you consider the preparation you might want to carry out. Preparing for a successful professional review interview starts long before you're actually in front of the interviewers. By arriving fully prepared, you will boost your own confidence. Have you consulted a professional registration advisor, PRA, or other source of advice? A PRA can help make sure you're presenting yourself in the best possible way. Many of our PRAs are also assessors and interviewers and therefore can give excellent advice from experience. However, a PRA who has advised you cannot also assess your application or perform the interview. Other sources of advice could be a company mentor or IET mentor. Have you reviewed your application form? The form is the first thing assessors will see and may be used as an agenda for your interview, so familiarise yourself again with what you have written. Have you read the interview guidance notes carefully? It's important that you read the guidance notes carefully before attending to ensure you are aware of what may be expected of you. Have you agreed the proposed format with an IET interview convener? Is your presentation supported by a PowerPoint presentation or documents only?
Have you prepared your presentation? Make sure you give evidence of your competence and involvement in the work. It is important that you are articulate, your thoughts are clear and concise, and that you show engineering and technical content, and demonstrate a measure of innovation. For CENG, also demonstrate leadership in a particular topic, piece of work or project. Have you checked the timing of your presentation? Your presentation should last no more than 15 minutes. Limit your presentation to five slides, normally allowing about three minutes per slide. There will be questions about the material presented. Have you taken paper copies of your presentation? You will need to provide three paper copies of your presentation material, one of which will be retained by the IET and the other two will be passed to the interviewers. Have you prepared any supporting evidence? Have a summary of your career with you. It's a useful prompt when answering questions. If you have any useful material to illustrate your success or problems you have resolved, take them with you. Interviewers always like to see visual evidence. It will almost certainly cover your ambitions for the future and your CPD plans, so make sure you have a copy of your development action plan. The interviewers might ask about your activity within the profession. Think about any talks you've attended recently or journals you enjoy. Any activity with your IET local network would be of interest. If you are a researcher or lecturer, details of your publications will be useful. Interviews are held regionally and are conducted by two trained interviewers, at least one of whom will be very experienced in your field. It normally lasts 60 minutes and takes the form of an informal discussion about your work and education, based on your application form. It's an opportunity for you to bring your application to life, for the interviewers to recognise the qualities that are not visible on your paper application. When in the IT's London base at Savoy Place, Arrive early and relax before the interview. Take the opportunity to use the library, the Kelvin Lounge or the Business Centre where you can access computers and have a cup of tea or coffee while you wait. Now, let's get a feel for what the professional review interview is like. You will arrive at reception, check in and be directed to a member area to wait for the interview convener. Convener will meet you, check your photo ID and escort you to the interview room and introduce you to the interviewers. In the meantime, the interviewers have briefly discussed your case and their format for the interview prior to you arriving. The format of the interview will be a 15 minute presentation by you and then we will have a discussion for up to 45 minutes. The purpose of this interview is for you to give us all the information you want to support your application. We don't want you to go away feeling that you have missed anything out. The interviewers will listen and give you the opportunity to demonstrate your breadth and depth of professional engineering and technology experiences. At the end of the interview, you will be asked if there is anything more that should be added. We want you to go away feeling that you have given the best evidence that you can. And safe journey home. After the interview, a professional review interview report form will be completed by the interviewers and a recommendation made to progress your application. Feedback to the registration panel is based on your written application form and the interview report, together with your presentation, development action plan and other relevant documents. A decision will be made on your application for registration normally within six weeks and you will be notified of the outcome by letter.
John. Very pleased to meet you, Alison. Yeah. Right, Would welcome. Would like to uh, take a seat and make yourself comfortable? Thank you. Our task, Alan and mine, over the next uh, hour or so is to take you gently through and have you take us gently through the, some key points from your career so that at the end of that time we can write a report. Okay. Uh, we don't uh, we don't make the final recommendation, that goes to a panel mm -hmm. at stage four of the total process and you'll hear back uh, from that panel in due course. Very IT well. hospitality, we can offer you tea, coffee, water, biscuits. Would you like yeah, thanks for asking. Do make yourself comfortable. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let's start by explaining what this process is about, which is that the Engineering Council for many years has insisted that everyone applying for C-Eng and I-Eng must be interviewed. So this is your opportunity to add to what you've put in your application form. So we're here to help you get the best evidence to put your best case forward. And what we have to do at the end of uh, this session is to fill in some evidence against each of the five generic areas uh, and also to score you against all 16 and then put that recommendation forward. Now one of the other things the Engineering Council asks us to do is to see some sort of written development action plan. Um, now, I understand that your identification has already been checked by Tina. It certainly um, has. And uh, what we also like to ask right at the beginning is whether anything's changed in your role or responsibilities since you put your application form in. No, it hasn't. Excellent, that's good. So there's nothing extra to talk about. So you've got a presentation uh, to show us and you've very kindly given us hard copy of uh, that as well. Uh, do you want us to ask questions as you go along or do you want us to leave those till you finish the presentation? Um, I'd like you to ask them as, as we go, please. Good. Excellent. Right, so for 15 minutes. It's there's a, there's a, certainly a lot of a, a, a big push to, to collaborate with, with anybody that we can um, in, in, in the domain. Um, and um, I have to make sure that um, I undertake um, a level of sort of rigorous scrutiny on the information that I'm using to, to form my assessments. Uh, You've answered one question already, which was okay. going to be what MEMS stands for. Right. I mean, <laughs> mi Microelectromechanical system. Sounds good. Can I ask, was that a bespoke training scheme which you designed yourself or was it a standard? It was, it was one that I had to design myself. Uh, uh, mi military equipment has to operate in some quite challenging environments. Mm -hmm. How do you find this move towards commercial, commercially produced equipment and systems uh, meets the military's requirements in that respect? Um, it's, again, it, it, historically... So how do you decide what technologies are of interest to you and, and what are not? Because there's so much going on you can't possibly investigate it all. Yeah, um, that is indeed a challenge. Um, so, so are you doing any actual research yourself, or is it all contracted out? It's, it's mainly, most of it is mainly contracted out. Uh, um, we've spoken quite a lot about the theoretical side of your job. Could you tell us a bit about a practical engineering problem that you had to solve? Uh, yes, um, I can. Uh, um, you, you mentioned a couple of times that you've worked with teams. Mm -hmm. Were those direct reports to you or teams which were brought together from specialist areas working under you for a specific project? They were direct reports to me um, and they were, uh, we started using this and this lamp costs us £150. Who made the decision to go with Kaipe? I, I made the decision. Your responsibility, that. excellent. Yeah. That's important for you to bring out, so is that, that's good news, yeah. alright, excellent. Okay. Um, so uh, once I started working with Kaipe, I looked could I look at your organisation structure, um, particularly around the C competencies? It looks like you've got quite a significant team uh, uh, now and have for the last year or so, is that right? That's right, yeah. And these are people that you're responsible for appraising, uh, for their technical development and for their salary review, would that be right? I, I will appraise the team leaders and the team coaches. I don't appraise the uh, base level frontline engineers, the team coach and the team leaders uh, appraise them, so but there is a process and I'm in that process. And what sort of capital and revenue budget do you have each year? Um, about two, two million for my biggest site um, and that's for staff. That, that's revenue I assume, or is that capital? That's, that, that's capital, capital. that's what? staff, non-staff. Um, Link to those areas, the bulletins. So we say to the maintenance what, what team... What was your role in that? Um, I actually came up with the idea with the Good. compliance limb because the figures we were getting in terms of especially the safety information, we were not getting... 
network. Can I pick up an issue around communications? Right. Uh, because you've got a very large organisation that yeah. uh, you're heading up knowledge management for. So how do you get across information both to uh, all of your colleagues and from all your colleagues? Right, uh, what we have um, in place is I have actually got communication methods. Uh, and, and did um, did you bring a copy of our development action plan with you? Um, I, I did, I passed it to Tina before I came in. Splendid, thank you. We can have a look at that later on, no doubt. Could you just very briefly uh, talk us through some of your development objectives for the next year and the next five years? Okay, um, yes. Um, in the, in the Have you thought about, uh, in the long term, a possible fellowship, mm -hmm. things like that? Um, yes, that would certainly be something I would uh, definitely... We, when we read through your application, the one thing that doesn't hit us, if you like, from the application was what you do for uh, continuing professional development. Which really links us into your uh, development action plan that you very uh, kindly brought along. Excellent, I'm glad you asked that. Um, my company are, are committed themselves to give me a training. And have you found institution activities helpful at all in keeping yourself up to date? Um, yeah, I, I read the magazines, uh, emails that, that, that we send out. Obviously, we, we talk about... Um, yeah. Have you attended any of the local uh, lectures? I haven't as of yet, no. Yeah. I would recommend it because uh, it's surprising uh, just getting in the networking uh, of other engineers. Uh, uh, it's surprising what uh, ideas you pick up that uh, somebody else is doing a complete different industry but you can actually pick up things to help you and, uh, and likewise they can pick up things off you as well. So, uh, and what are your long-term ambitions? Um, I'd like to move up into the company. Uh, I'd like to move up first of all with engineering to the next lot, to probably like a territorial engineer. And have you had any experience with risk assessment? Yes, um, as part of my area maintenance manager's role where I used to manage about 27 engineers. Well, I think the this interview is drawing nicely to a close. I think we've, uh, both Alan and I, have enjoyed ourselves hugely. Um, it's time to ask if um, you've got any, if there are any particular questions which we haven't raised and which you might have expected us to or which you were keen to expound on. Um, no, I don't think I have anything specifically. Uh... Uh, Martin, thank you very much for coming today. It's been a splendid interview, very interesting for, from both our points of view and I hope from yours. Right, thank you very much indeed, James. Um, have we covered all the ground that you wanted to tell us about, or are there any other key areas that you think is important that you tell us uh, about? Uh, no, I think I, I pretty much covered it. Good. Yeah. Okay. And is there anything you'd like to ask us? Uh, no, I think you, you've covered everything that uh, I'd like to know. So Good. thank okay. you very much. I wish you well in your uh, in your career, and uh, thank yeah. you very much. And and safe journey home. Thank you very much. Absolutely. The interviewers discuss what they have heard and how they will report back to the registration panel. They must make a clear recommendation. And the interviewers can recommend a referral if particular aspects of the candidate's application needs further examination. A declined applicant will be contacted in writing with an explanation of why their case for registration was not demonstrated and they will be referred to a professional registration advisor for detailed guidance on the reasons their application was not yet ready and for some advice on next steps needed for any future application to be successful. OK, so let's recap what you've just learnt. Preparation is key. The interview is informal. You are put at ease. It's conducted in a relaxed and friendly atmosphere. It is not a technical examination or interrogation. The presentation is about your personal technical contribution. And the interview explores your evidence of competence. It gives you the opportunity to express and present yourself and it aids the overall assessment. The professional review interview will affect the outcome of your registration application and therefore your future. It is vital that you are fully prepared. Everyone wants you to present your strongest evidence effectively and succeed. It is an important stage of your professional career.